Hello again and welcome back to 10 Things About Writing. It's getting pretty wintry in the shed now. And today I'm going to talk to you about a subject that keeps cropping up and it is that of genre. Now a lot of people tell me all kinds of things about genre that presuppose that there is a way of describing what a certain genre is like. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily as clear cut as people think it is. There are some people who refuse to read genre fiction at all because they feel that genre fiction is second rate and commercial, as if there was something bad in wanting to sell books. Um, and some people refuse to read literary fiction because they think that it's dull and boring and doesn't have a plot. Well, both those opinions are to a certain extent valid, but there is a proportionally much larger area of greyness. Which, uh, which means that it's actually quite difficult to judge either genre or literary fiction just by the packaging. Think about it. Publishers are exactly like manufacturers of anything else. What they want to do is to sell a product to as many different people as possible. And if you look at products like washing powder, for instance, which are nearly all made by the same firms, you find that there are different kinds of quite similar washing powder without saying entirely identical washing powder, but with very different packaging so that people tend to feel that one of them is classier than the other. Uh, one of them is more eco-friendly than the other. And sometimes the truth is a little bit more fluid than that. So I've selected two books and I'm going to read you an extract from the beginning of both of them. Um, they're interesting. Both of them I like enormously. Uh, both of them are by male American writers. Um, both of them are set in a kind of fantasy, post-apocalyptic world. Both of them feature as principal characters a man and a boy. Both of them are road trips towards a kind of vaguely fable-like ocean and perhaps beyond. Both of them have elements of horror and the grotesque. However, one of them won a Pulitzer Prize and is considered to be quite hardcore literary fiction. The other is by an author who is a well-known horror writer and is considered to be commercial and genre. I'm not going to tell you which is which, although it's quite probable that you will be able to tell. The first extract I'm going to read from my well-thumbed copy of the book. When he woke in the woods, in the dark and the cold of the night, he'd reach out to touch the child sleeping beside him. Nights dark beyond darkness and the days more grey each one than what had gone before. Like the onset of some cold glaucoma dimming away the world, his hand rose and fell softly with each precious breath. He pushed away the plastic tarpaulin and raised himself in the stinking robes and blankets and looked towards the, ca the east for any light, but there was none. In the dream from which he'd wakened, he had wandered in a cave where the child led him by the hand, their light playing over the wet flowstone walls, like pilgrims in a fable swallowed up and lost among the inward parts of some granitic beast, deep stone flues where the water dripped and sang, tolling in the silence the minutes of the earth and the hours and the days of it and the years without cease. Until they stood in a great stone room where lay a black and ancient lake, and on the far shore a creature that raised its dripping mouth from the rimstone pool and stared into the light with eyes dead white and sightless as the eggs of spiders. It swung its head low over the water, as if to take the scent of what it could not see. Crouching there pale and naked and translucent, its alabaster bones cast up in shadow on the rocks behind it. Its bowels, its beating heart, the brain that pulsed in a dull glass bell. It swung its head from side to side and then gave out a low moan and turned and lurched away and loped soundlessly into the dark. I'm going to digest that for a while and then I'm going to read you something from the second book. Um, and I would like you to compare and contrast the style because very much of the, the preconception about literary fiction and genre fiction 
is that the styles are fundamentally different. Now, I don't think that's always necessarily true. So this is the second passage. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. The desert was the apotheosis of all deserts, huge, standing to the sky for what looked like eternity in all directions. It was white and blinding and waterless and without feature save for the faint cloudy haze of the mountains which sketched themselves on the horizon and the devil grass which brought sweet dreams, nightmares, death. An occasional tombstone sign pointed the way. For once the drifted track that cut its way through the thick crust of alkali had been a highway. Coaches and buckers had followed it. The world had moved on since then. The world had emptied. Now, if you read widely across the board, you may already have guessed what these two texts are. The first is Cormac McCarthy's The Road. Now, I love Cormac McCarthy. I love his books. I love his style. Um, and I also love Stephen King and his Dark Tower books, which was the second of the opening novels. Now, I think that they have a certain amount in common, not just within the construction of the book, which is, as I said, a road trip. Obviously, the Dark Tower goes on much longer, has a great deal more plot content. There are a great number of encounters. There are a great number of characters attached to each of the encounters. The road is much more streamlined and spare. The road is actually, I think, very similar to the first novel of Stephen King's The Gunslinger, A Man and a Boy on a journey through a mysterious post-apocalyptic landscape. Now, what makes them so different? Why are they marketed in such a different way? Well, it's a bit of a mystery, because when you look at the, the style of it, I love Cormac McCarthy's style. I don't always think of Stephen King as being a great stylist, but there are lots of things in common here. There are the simple, the, the simple use of language, punctuated by an occasional unusual word, the apotheosis of all deserts, the granitic landscape, just to remind you that actually you have somebody who knows how to play with words and who is using simplicity as a device rather than a limitation. Um, you've got this deliberate usage of short sentences interspersed with longer sentences to give a variation of the rhythm patterns. Sometimes the short sentences, and particularly in Cormac McCarthy, don't have a verb. This, of course, is grammatically inaccurate, but stylistically interesting and a chosen feature. You have the constant repetition of certain words, the idea of greyness in Cormac McCarthy, the idea of desert in Stephen King. And you have this almost folkloric way in both of the books of referring to the boy as the boy, to the man as the man or the gunslinger, rather than choosing to talk about their names, to give them a different identity. You've got this kind of myth poetic thing going on. Um, now, I know a lot of people who have read Cormac McCarthy but don't read Stephen King. I know a lot of people who read Stephen King but wouldn't touch Cormac McCarthy with a barge pole. And I'm not telling you that you are wrong, necessarily. However, I am saying that Wider reading does tend to give a wider understanding of how storytelling works, because all writers are effectively storytellers. Some of them are rich on plot, some of them are a bit thinner on plot, some of them are bigger on character, some of them are shorter on character. But there is nothing intrinsically within genre that doesn't also exist within literary fiction. In fact, arguably, literary fiction is also a genre. Um, and anybody who tells you that one is less worthy than the other, probably just hasn't read enough of either of them. There's a great deal of snobbery in the book business. And I am here to tell you, don't be fooled. It's not exactly that all packs of washing powder are the same, that rather you don't necessarily know what is in a pack of washing powder until you actually use it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, both of these are excellent books. One is viewed in a different way by the literary world. Now, why? Possibly because the literary world hasn't read a lot of genre. 
And this crops up quite a lot in conversations about genre and from the genre community. And I do sympathise because when Cormac McCarthy comes up with a post-apocalyptic story about a man and a boy wandering through a desert, he is praised and called original and groundbreaking. Whereas, of course, Stephen King did it a long time ago. And other writers of genre also have done this a long time ago. And sometimes the literary world tends to feel that it has discovered something or that its use of something is groundbreaking. If you think about various literary novelists who have discovered the topic of artificial intelligence in their mainstream literary writing and have written an original, striking and groundbreaking sci-fi book, which is actually not that groundbreaking in that it's repeating the work done by sci-fi authors for the past century and a half. Therefore, what do you do? You read more widely. You try to, to pierce through the levels of snobbery that surround literary fiction and surround genre. Remember that if you borrow from genre, it's a good idea to read genre and to know that what you are borrowing is new and good and treated originally as, as the Cormac McCarthy is, rather than something old and tired that only literary readers will appreciate because they just haven't read broadly enough to understand the world that it came from. So read literary fiction, read genre, appreciate both. Look at stylists for what they are, rather than whether they've got a serious looking cover on the book or whether they've got a fantasy, slightly schlocky looking cover on the book. Because although indeed book jackets are supposed to make you judge the book, they're supposed to appeal to the designated audience, sometimes there's a level of cynicism in this too. A book is not its packaging. A book should not be the reputation of its author. A book should stand alone. And a writer, and you are all writers of course, should understand this and should tailor your consumption appropriately. Thanks a lot for listening. Till next time, happy writing and bye-bye. <laughs>